I am Dr. Jaya Vijayan and I will be giving you a brief video in understanding the use of electrophotometer. Very basic number, not going into details on its mechanics, rather on the principles of the use of spectrophotometer and also by using the spectrophotometer to obtain absorbances you can then use this Beer's law or Beer numbers law to determine an unknown protein concentration. Usually in the determination of a protein using Bradford reagent, Biorad reagent and several other uh, dyes that's been used to um, in the protein determination. Here you can see the very old uh, spectrophotometer. This may not be found in the labs these days. And uh, this is what uh, been utilized maybe 30, 40 years ago. So you have here the place where you can flip and put the cuet, the sample cell. And uh, if you put only the dye, say the buret region or Bradford region, and that will be called as blank. Once you put this blank, you then use this uh, uh, this uh, mechanism to turn until the needle, which is now here, will be turned to be facing zero. So this spectrophotometer is still, uh, you know, very much analog rather than digital. So nowadays the spectrophotometers are much more digital. There will be numbers rather than having these needles. Anyway, once the blank has been put and become zero, then you can uh, throw away the uh, reagent which serves as the blank add in into it the tube that has reagent as well as uh, protein that has reacted you put it back into this compartment and therefore you can read the needle will then change to a different location and that will be the absorbance of that particular test and then you can go to a different test tube and keep reading and getting more absorbances. Okay. So this spectrophotometer is very useful in uh, measuring absorbance as well as a uh, change of light uh, pathway also known as uh, transmittance. So it is a tool uh, used in biochemistry to determine unknown mixture or unknown by uh, using different wavelengths. The wavelength should be in between UV, visible or infrared ranges as you can see here. Okay. Usually, the spectrophotometer that we have will be either uh, visible range which is 400 to 700 okay. or it could be in UV 100 to 400 plus visible light. So it has two bulbs which uh, gives out uh, light in the UV range as well as visible light range. Uh, there is there are there are also uh, spectrophotometers which are high end, more expensive, and that goes to range of 1,000 and even beyond. But it will be more expensive and very specific in its uh, application. Uh, maybe we have no need for it in a biochemistry laboratory and these spectrophotometers are more for advanced material uh, application. So a pure solute uh, such as protein uh, does not have carbohydrate, does not have say nucleic acid, will have highest uh, wavelength absorption. Uh, some method such as the method 
will already identify a particular wavelength for you uh, to adjust. This is where you adjust in a spectrophotometer to wavelength. For Bradford uh, reagent or Bradford assay, usually we adjust it to 595 mm. And uh, this spectrophotometer, other than determining unknown, uh, also useful in the enzyme kinetic reagent where you determine the loss of the substrate or the product being made in a duration of time. And therefore, you use these values to calculate uh, you know, the KM, Michael H. Menton, Lynn Weaver, Berg. So that's a bit complicated, but also possible to use the spectrophotometer uh, to, you, to determine the KM value of the of enzyme. Let's move on. So here you have uh, what will be the inside uh, of the spectrophotometer. Okay. What will be inside here in the spectrophotometer? We are now uh, viewing it in in a diagram, a schematic diagram. But before that, I just want to emphasize the use of different QED or sample cell because we are using different wavelength from 100 to 400, 400 to 700. If it's 595, then it falls in the visible light. Uh, so Bradford reagent, you don't have to worry. You can use either glass QED or the Possible plastic QED. Now, this is how the plastic QED looks like and it's disposable. Normally, we use a disposable QED when we are working with something which is infectious, uh, pathogen, microbes. So, we want to use it and then throw it away. But if you buy the glass QED, it is washable and then you can use it uh, many times. The quartz QED has only one purpose and it is uh, well it is also possible to use it on a different uh, range but the purpose has been more to uv range that is 100 to 400 so when you have a sample you want to measure like a warburg christian method which uh, requires in the uv range you just put the protein solution, no need to have dye, and you uh, measure using the quartz QED. Uh, that purpose is because the uh, UV seems to be absorbing and also uh, the, the surface of plastic as well as glass seems to be uh, attracting uh, this uh, uh, UV light. So when you are using uh, UV range, any wavelength between 100 and 400, you have to ensure only use quartz QED for better accuracy. This possible still to use uh, plastic or glass, but the accuracy will run off in the UV range. So that's why we prefer to use quartz QED even though it's uh, much more expensive than uh, plastic as well as uh, glass. Right, so with that cleared, uh, let's look at the, uh, the diagram, schematic diagram on a spectrophotometer. It has the light source. Uh, light source, as I said, can be either uh, visible light or UV light, and it will emit light and when it touch the monochromato, it will refract all the different range uh, between, say, for UV 100 to 400, and then uh, for visible light can be 400 to 700. But you have this aperture. This aperture is the one that will decide on uh, you choosing the wavelength. Say you choose 595, then that 
uh, you know, the light that has been uh, emitted at 595 will be only allowed into this emitter. And therefore, the QED will be there, the sample cell, and the liquid that you have inside the QED, hopefully, will absorb this uh, 595 light. And whatever it absorbs, will be then uh, have less light compared to the incident light and what has been transmitted. This transmitted light will be then uh, converted from light to electric pulse. So there will be conversion of energy done by the photoresistor and this signal or impulse will be amplified accordingly and now from light it will be created in values uh, as absorbance okay there is no unit for absorbance but if the light is a lot has been uh, absorbed more concentrated solution will absorb more of that particular light then the value will be much higher compared to something which is less concentrated. So that's what's happening in the spectrophotometer where absorption will take place and this absorption will be known as values of absorbance. Okay? And uh, this uh, QED by right should allow all this incident light to go in without disturbance. That's where in the UV range, if you use plastic QED or glass QED, it seems to be a thing. So it doesn't give an accurate uh, absorbance. That's why we tend to use uh, what's QED in the time of UV range. Right? So with that, uh, let's move on. There are new advances coming about all the time. And... Uh, even this is outdated, but here you can see where you can just use so little uh, using a micro pipette. This is almost like a small droplet. Uh, you put into here using a micro pipette, and then you flip this and this to become like a duet there. Insert it into the area where it can receive the QED and then it will immediately give the concentration. Uh, so that's the uh, what's unique about this spectrophotometer compared to the one that in the background which is the spectrophotometer which is the newer version of uh, what I have already shown here. Uh, so this one it will give absorbance but this newer one will straight away will calculate and give you the concentration of protein or concentration of nucleic acid. So that's how once it is. Okay? Uh, so that's the new advances. I'm sure there are more and more new advances currently which I cannot highlight here. So moving on, we are looking at the Beer-Lambert's law or Beer's law. Uh, this is not the beer that you are thinking about. It's not an alcoholic beverage. But however, the transmittance equation or formula given here is not very useful. When you derive it with some really, you know, mathematical uh, changes you have to do, very complicated, but eventually you will arrive to this A equals ACL. This absorbance equals extinction coefficient multiplied by concentration multiplied by light part is very useful to determine unknown concentration in biochemistry. So how do we use it? Uh, if the uh, K is constant and even L is constant because when manufacturers build the QED, it will be always 1 cm in width. 
can see here the width here is always cm apart all uh, universal when it comes to the qs okay so you have uh, here a equals k multiplied by c multiplied by l if you forget about the constant uh, denominators uh, the a and l you just concentrate on a and c what we can understand is a is directly proportionate to concentration whenever you increase the concentration a also proportionally increases it doesn't stay put or you know it doesn't become uh, you know uh, reverse value okay so how do we use it okay you can build this standard curve when you have a standard usually in the protein lab we will use bsa uh, bovine serum albumin which is a known protein standard we will have different different concentration of uh, this bsa to be diluted and we start to read its absorbent using the spectrophotometer. Therefore, we will have the absorbent value for this different different concentration. And we will also know the concentration because we weigh it. So you have the absorbent and also concentration known for this BSA standard. And by right, you will have a straight line like this. And this straight line normally goes through the origin, which is uh, zero. Okay? So this is called a standard curve. And how do we use this standard curve? Right? Once you have done the BSA, the standard, you can also take a particular similar concentration, which you don't know for the unknown. But the volume should be same by right uh, as that's been done for the bsa say you use one ml for the bsa you take the one ml of the unknown protein concentration put it into the spectrophotometer and also measure the absorbance now you have the standard curve what you do is the old way we build this uh, graph using graph paper and then we will extrapolate say the absorbent for the unknown is here okay? and then we by using a ruler we extrapolate we will know the concentration for the unknown now but nowadays we can use the microsoft cell where it gives the equation y equals mx plus c normally c is uh, mm. zero because it goes through the origin therefore y equals uh, mx and if you know y which is the absorbance of the unknown you also know the gradient which is m therefore you can find find out the unknown of x uh, and therefore you will know the concentration of the unknown the only uh, exemption to this uh, use of the graph standard curve is you have to ensure you don't have the unknown concentration to be uh, uh, too concentrated where your absorbent will be here uh, too high it has to be within the range of uh, the standard curve okay? because they say if you use a too high of a absorbance the accuracy is not there if you were using a graph paper this is what is considered a place where inaccuracy could take place so inside this range it is pretty much accurate you use a uh, too high of a concentration for the unknown it will not be accurate uh, it has to be you know extrapolated inside 
this uh, standard term. So how do we uh, solve this challenge? What we do is we repeat the unknown concentration uh, for something which is highly concentrated. We dilute it uh, two times or four times and then we make sure it the absorbent falls within the standard curve that's shown here. And uh, once we calculate, we take into the dilution factor, therefore correct the uh, dilution taken place. So that's my take on uh, the use of a spectral photometer as well as the use of Gear-Lambert's law to determine unknown protein concentration.